Hey, how you doing out there in YouTube land? This stiletto coming at you from the wild, wild west. December 14th. This might be my last video of the year. And this video is just displaying my ADC box for this year. The ones that I like the best for this year. The one I, I carried and I put in my ADC box. Some are oldies that have always have been in my ADC boxes. But some of them aren't. So let's, let's get down to it. Let's count them off. Let's start up here first. The Cold Steel Spada. The large Spada. The AUS 10A Stone Washed Saber Ground Espada. Absolutely love this knife. And as you guys know, it's been polished. It's been tuned up to my specifications. The way I like it. Absolutely love this one. Highly recommend the Espada. It's one that you can still get. They're not expensive. Even though the GSM is, you know, taking over, these are they're still available. They're available for about 120 to 130 bucks, depending on what website you find them at. Here's one that you can't get anymore. This is my AUS 8A Towel War, large towel war. This has been with me for about I don't know, eight years or so. I, whenever these first came out, that's why I got this one. This is the first towel war I ever bought. This one and its big brother. I bought them at the same time. The big brother of this one I used to carry all the time. But this one's had the most pocket time because of our new four inch blade law. So I don't carry the big brother that much no more. And this is one I carry now. This is nice. I like to carry this with my holdout I think it's called a holdout 2 on motorcycles all the time I like to carry this one in my right front pocket and I'll put the holdout inside my my gun my gun pocket of my leather vest my motorcycle vest highly recommend it highly recommend it. yes this one's Oz 8A and I do have the CTS 6HP versions both in with the with the DLC coated blade and different colored handles and in the plain the plain blade and in, uh, what do you call it? And with the serrated blades. The serrated blade ones, I don't have one in this size, but I have one in the larger size. But I like the, I like the Oz 8 one because it's easy to resharpen. And with this kind of blade, blade grind, a full flat um, blade grind, it works pretty good with the Oz 8A. Cold Steel's Oz 8A is pretty good. It'll hold the edge pretty well. Better than it does if you have the thicker blade stock, like a saber ground blade or something like that. It'll, this holds, it tends to hold the edge better. I don't know why, it just does. The same thing for the holdouts. They hold the, the Oz 8A holds, holds the edge pretty well in the holdouts too. Next one up, the Tiger Claw. I love my Tiger Claw. This is my only serrated blade in this box. I do have this in the plain edge. But this is one I prefer. I do have the Black Talon 2, plain and serrated. The Black Talon 2, serrated one used to be always in my box, but I don't have room for it no more. So I decided I want this one more than I want the, the Black Talon 2 in my box. I just, I like the Tiger Claw. That's my favorite one of the two. But I do love both of them. I love the Black Talon 2 also. But the Tiger Claw, just I just like it a little bit better. I like it because it's like, you know, folding karambit. Absolutely love it. This one's a CTX HP version. All of mine are CTX HPs. All, all the the two Tiger Claws and two Talons I have, they're both CTS XHP. I'm both in plain and serrated edges. But for to me, I think a, this is a total defensive knife to me, and I think it's best with a serrated edge. Don't use it for cutting chores. It's just a self-defense knife if I ever have to use it. Next up. And all these have been polished. All these have been polished and tuned. Polished and tuned. Next up is my favorite holdout series, which is the first holdout series because they had the thicker handle scales. The newer, the newer one that, that's no longer available, the one that came after this, 
had thinner handle scales. And but you know, it came with better steel though. It came with the CTS 6 HP. This is stainless this stainless steel is a Oz 8A, Japanese Oz 8A stainless steel. Like I said, they, these will hold the edge very well. And I use this one for a ton of different cutting chores. And it has a bigger brother that I often use when I'm doing barbecuing and stuff. I like to use it for cutting up meat and stuff. Excellent knife. And as you can see, this one's been totally polished. Lots of my knives that are cold steel knives that I carried a lot, I've always tuned them and polished them so they operate smoother. That's just what I do with these, with the cold steels, because lots of times they, they have a little, you know, they, they, they need to be tuned up a little bit sometimes to get them to work the way that you want them to work. And the last of the polished ones, there it is, number 154. I don't really, I've carried this one a couple times, but I don't really carry it. I just like playing with it. <laughs> this was more of a toy than anything. But I absolutely love it. And this one, I totally polished the handles, the handle scales. And that's, I didn't polish the blade or anything. I only polished the handles on this one. And swapped out the parts with, um, with a stock one of these. A stock, uh, Tie Light 6 with the 7075 aluminum handle scales. I love that crisp blade. I love the 154 crisp blade. Number 154. Absolutely love it. Highly recommend these. Probably a great collector too, but this one I didn't intend on it being a collector. I intended on being mine. Next up. Let's go to my other stiletto type knives. To me, these four right here are my stilettos. My other stiletto type knife. This is the one that I didn't like at first, but now I love it. It doesn't the blade doesn't hit the back spacer at all. The, the, I sent the two of them back to SOG and they sent me these back. And these absolutely work perfectly. I've been taking this one to work just about every day since I've had it. And it's never hit the back spacer. This is the one that says stiletto. The other one, the other one I kept as a collector. The other one I kept as a collector, so I don't, I don't use the other one. But this one I use all the time. It's actually a cool little knife. It's really lightweight. You forget about it. Absolutely love it. It's the reason why I got into the Sogs, and it works perfectly too. What's my little girl doing? Hmm? What's my little girl doing? You want to get in the video? Oh. She has come to join us today. She doesn't know what she wants to do. Mm-hmm. Goofy girl. That's my goofy girl. Yes, she is. That's my goofy girl. That's Papa's goofy girl, huh? Loves her Papa. That's my baby. I see you. That's Juno for all of you don't don't know her name. She's a regular in lots of my videos. <laughs> That's my girl. Mm-hmm. She's a little YouTube star. Okay. Back to the knives. Next one up is my favorite out of my stilettos. Is this one right here. My tactical stiletto, should I say. The Benchmade BK, 9391BK. D2 blade. Oh, the, the SOG has a, a, a CTSX HP blade and, and my uh, Tie Light 6 has a 440C blade. This is Saber Ground D2 blade. American D2. It's not the Chinese D2, it's American D2. So it's real D2. But I absolutely love this one. It's one of my favorites. This is the one I broke the spring in. I replaced it, fixed it. And I bought a bunch of springs, so if it breaks again, it's easy to fix. 
I don't think it's going to break again, though, because I put a lot of lube on the spring and stuff. And hopefully that'll help it out last and longer. But this is my favorite one. Next, next up on, we got another SOG here. And that's my SOG Vision. I love this one, too. This is my favorite. This is the most fun one to play with out of all the knives I have. It just functions super easily, and it's just the most fun to play with. The SOG Vision XR. With, with their XR lock. And this one has CTS XHP steel, stainless steel also, Saber Ground, Tonto Blade. Absolutely love it. It's a great knife to carry to work. Next up on the pecking order, we got the Hogue. My Ritter Hogue. Another Saber Ground blade. This one's got the 20 CV blade. This is the large Ritter Hogue. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. I think the blade stock's a 3.1, a little bit over 3.1 millimeters thick. Absolutely love it. Three and a half inch blade. Next one up is one that's been with me for a long time. It's been in a lot of my EDC drawer videos. The American Lawman. CTX XHP, DLC coated. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Another all-time favorite. One of my all-time favorite cold steels for the smaller knives. Absolutely love it. What you want attention, girl? You just want to get attention. Mm-hmm. I'm on to you. That has a hollow ground blade. Mm-hmm. I see you. Papa sees you. I see you. She's an attention freak. She loves getting attention all the time. That's my girl. Next one up is my Spyderco Manix 2 XL. I absolutely love this one. It has a, it has a DLC coating also. I noticed this one's starting to wear, the DLC coating on this one's starting to wear. It's a little bit different than the Cold Steel DLC coating. I don't think it's as tough. But it's wearing nicely though. Absolutely love it. It's a great work knife. Full flat ground blade. It has a a, a 30, what's it? S30V. S30V blade. That's what it has. CPM S30V. It's a great knife. With the ball bearing lock. Ball bearing lock. It's a little bit different. Another all time classic. CTX HP, hollow ground, chisel tip, recon, recon one, large recon run. Absolutely love this knife. I've had it ever since these first came out. It's a great knife. Highly recommend the recons. It's always been one of my favorites. This one and the Tal War are probably my number one favorites for cold steels. And I do like my Voyagers too. Always like my Voyagers. I see you. You just want to get kisses, huh? Mm-hmm. Trying to get all up in Papa's lap. Papa's doing a video. I'm doing a video. Mm-hmm. Doing a video, kiddo. And next one up is the Clever Girl. The Clever Girl. This is new. This is a totally new one for me for this year. I never heard about these until this year. Actually, until a few months ago, actually. But the Deadbolt Lock. I absolutely love it. And now I know it's super strong. Held 580 pounds or 90 pounds, something like that. When when the master master knife maker lock maker Andrew Demko tested against the SR1 Tonto. Another one of my favorite blades. 
And I, I don't know if uh, I'm gonna leave a link to his uh, Slicey Dicey interview when he did an interview with Slicey Dicey, and he talks about how you make the di uh, the the triad lock the strongest. He says uh, he says the knives with the thickest blade stock will have the strongest triad lock. Explains why they use the five millimeter um, SR or four point eight millimeter SR one against the. 3.8 millimeter clever girl uh-huh because it has a stronger lock than, than the, the ones that have like a four millimeter blade or a 3.8 millimeter blade makes sense absolutely love the clever girl i like this one because i like the flipper i like the way that this was super easy to take care of and super easy to maintain i love this hollow hollow ground persian style blade And the handle, it took me a little bit getting used to it because the, the handle scales feel a little bit rough at first, but once you get used to it, it feels comfortable. It sort of has to grow on you, the handle scales. But I like the G10 handle scales now. And it's, this is one of my, it's become one of my all-time favorites. I'm on, this, one, this one you'll see in my EDC drawers from year to year for a while now. Because I know it's going to be one of my favorites, unless they come up with something better. But it's got a D2 stainless steel blade. It's made in Taiwan. It's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely love it. And it cuts and slices really nicely. I've used it for a lot of food prep type stuff. Like salami and crackers and cheese. You know, things like that. <laughs> Opening up letters and boxes and things like that. And I think this is a Cerakote finish. Oh, no, it's a PVD finish. I'm sorry, it's PVD. That's what it is. PVD. Which seems like a very tough finish, almost like uh, CTSXHP. I think it's actually tougher than the CTSXHP that Spyderco uses. Their mate, Matt Black's uh, CTSXHP, but the glossy CTSXHP that Cole still uses is super tough. The Hogue, the Sog, and the Benchmade and the SOG Pentagon, they all use a Cerakote. That's what they're using, a Cerakote. Okay, over here, these are my work knives that go, go to work with me every day. My AUS, Japanese AUS 10A Large Voyager. Voyager Tonto with the hollow ground blade and the chisel tip. Just like the Recon. Absolutely love it. This one rides in my fanny pack. When you hear me say my fanny pack, this is my fanny pack. This is why I carry all my stuff in. And this one rides in the fanny pack like this. Carry it just like that. And this is a K-Bar knife pouch. And in the, inside my fatty pack, I keep my wallet, flashlight, and something you don't need to know about. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what rides in my fanny pack. Keep my keys in here. This one, I carry my bug out bag. This uh, this is the same knife, the Voyager, Voyager uh, with the Tonto blade with the hollow ground chisel tip. This one has the other one has a three and a half millimeter blade. This one has a four millimeter blade, and it has a five and a half inch blade as opposed to the four inch blade. But this one rides in my fanny pack, the Voyager XL. Goes to work with me every day. And I love these handles. I really love the Voyager handles because. You got the nice strong forward grip and you got a really nice strong extended grip where it holds in your hand. As opposed to the, the Recon 1s, they have more of a straight handle. I like this handle better than the Recon 1 handle. Even though I like the Recon 1s, uh, uh, you know, I really love the Recon 1s because the materials that they're using, they're using G10. G10 is my favorite handle scale. 
and they use my my recons. I have them from Oz Eight to um, to CTSXHP. Most of the ones I have are in CTSXHP. I have a, I have only have two Oz Eight ones, but I have a I have a bunch of of large Oz Eight ones that back in the day I polished all the way out, and they're like mirror polished blades and stuff like that. I would do a video on all the knives that I've I've had over the years and I've used. So you guys can see the ones I've actually used. And most of them have been Tantos. Tantos and well, the Tau Wars. This one right here. And then I have a, I have a bunch of, I have a bunch of uh, uh, American Lawmen that I used over the years. And what else? But most of them have been Voyagers and, and uh, tie light sixes and holdouts and espadas and towel wars. Those have been my pretty much my go-to knives for last 10 years or so since they first came out. I like these because they're inexpensive. And if it gets confiscated or something, it's not a big loss. Or if I have to use it and it gets broken or whatever, you know, like I'm talking about like an emergency situation, if I have to fix something or repair something, and I have to pry with it or whatever, have to do whatever with it, and I damage it, it's easy to replace. That's the reason why I carry these in my car all the time because they're, you know, they're meant for emergency situations. Whatever the situation may be, if I have to, you know, fix or repair something or if I have to defend myself, all of the above. That's what that's what a Voyager to me is good for because. To me, this is the best bang for your buck right here. Of all the cold steel folding triad lock knives, I think the Voyager series is the best bang for your buck. They're the most least expensive, and they give you, you know, a real good quality strong knife. I've seen these hold like 450 pounds or so. They're, you know, it's a good strong knock, lock and knife, and you can't go wrong with it. It's got uh, heat treated. It's got full heat treated aluminum liners that are bedded inside the the Grivex handle scales. Four millimeter blade stock. It's got Grivery backspacer. Excellent knives. These are excellent knives. I highly, highly recommend these. And this one is the new glove box knife. I decided after doing the other video that I did that it was time to retire my old recon. My old Recon 1 XL, the Recon 1 XL that I used to always carry in my glove box with the Oz 8 blade, the stone wash Oz 8 blade, the one where I removed the Tough X finish. And I decided to replace it with another Recon. But this one's a fixed blade Recon. And it's a San May. With the 5mm blade stock. VG10 Sam May, hollow ground chisel tip. And I went with the, I decided to put the recon in there instead of my Master Tonto, um, 3V Master Tonto. It was between those two that I decided because, I don't know, this one's a little bit longer, got a little bit more reach, so it'd be good, good for emergency fighting knife and stuff like that. That's the purpose this one would serve. And I love, I love the grip on it. The grip on these is awesome. I love the Crayx grips. To me, they're, they're super grippy and they feel like they can't slip out your hand. I, I just really love the Crayx grips. My favorite Crayx grip though is the like the ones on the um, the Nightfall series and the and the Sam May Tonto series, the Magnum series. But this one's really nice too. It's sort of like the the oil bun and, and the oil buns and the co buns, only it's a little bit thicker, and it's got a palm swell in it, so it makes it even more comfortable. It's an awesome knife, and the thick blade stock runs all the way back here, and that through and then this hole goes through the blade stock. And I think it helps hold keep the handle on. But uh, it's an awesome knife. It's got the seven inch blade. Absolutely love it. This is my glove box knife now. 
And I did the, I did the um, cold steel sheath, sheath, uh, sheath, sheath attachments and deleted the, what do you call it, the snap, the, the snap part of the, the sheath. So when you wear this, it fits tightly against your body. And when you put your shirt over it, you can't see it. Or you can carry it legally with the sh you know, with it exposed. And this is a cold steel part. And no, it's not the one I had for collecting. The one I have for collecting is still a collector. And here it is right here. It's still in the box. Absolutely love it. Well, that's it. That's my EDC block box for uh, 2020. Hope you guys have a good Christmas. I probably won't. I probably won't make any more videos until next year. This is my end of the year video, my EDC box. Hope everybody has a merry, merry Christmas. And isn't it awesome? The vaccine is out. The vaccine is out. They say within about three to four months, everybody should be vac vaccinated. So hopefully next football season, we'll have a real football season. <laughs> and kids will be able to go to school and, you know, without any worries and stuff like that. And things can start getting back to normal again. So that's some good news. That's some good news. I look forward to that. Because I, I, know, I, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of wearing a mask. But you know, I do it, you know, because I, I don't want to be, I want to be, I don't want to be part of the problem. I'd rather be part of the solution. That's the way I sort of think. And it's, it doesn't infringe on my freedom. I think it infringes on everybody else's freedom when you don't wear it. Tell you the truth, because you're, you're putting them in jeopardy, or they're putting you in jeopardy, one or the other. So, but anyway, that's it for 2020. It was a good year for knives, except for the bad news with cold steel. Because some knives came out that I really do like. Uh, the, like the, well, this actually came out, I think, last year. I didn't find out about it until this year. The Clever Girl and the Seismic. The Flavio Akuma, Akuma knives. I absolutely love them. The CRKT. Now, I haven't carried a CRKT since, like, the M16. Back in the days when I used to carry liner locks. But I haven't, I haven't carried a, a CRKT in over 10 years. This is the first one I've bought in a long time. The first series. And I absolutely love the, the Clever Girl and the Seismic. And I know they have a few other models. I didn't, I didn't venture off in those models. But, you know, I bought enough of these. I got, I got like seven of them now or something like that. I can't remember. Six or seven. Absolutely love them. And this spider car I really like too, the Manix, the Manix 2. And this is the Manix 2 XL, this is one I like because it fits my hand perfectly. Fits my hand perfectly and it's a great slicer, it's great for cutting cheese and, and you know, slicing up your food stuff and everything with that full flat grind. I don't think it's the toughest blade that I have, but it's a good, it's a good user blade. Is that a good way to put it? Oh, and I modified it. I forgot to tell you about that. I modified it with the, um, what's the name of that company? Fly Titanium. Fly Titanium. I took out the plastic piece and, and replaced it with the Fly Titanium piece. I like the open back spacers. It's really a nice knife. I really love these. But like I said, this coating is starting to wear off. A little bit. I don't know if you can see, like, right up in here. And it's just, it seems like it's fading. It's a really good knife, though. Carry this one a lot. I absolutely love it. Whenever I know I'm going to do food prep at work or something like that, last time I'll go carry this one. And the action's pretty decent on it, too. The ball bearing, the ball bearing lock is not absolutely my favorite though. Out of all the 
knives that are sort of like this, like the crossbar, cross, um, crossbar lock knives. I sort of like those a little bit better. But I think this would probably be a little bit stronger. I don't know. I don't know which one's stronger. But it's actually, you know, pretty nice. But I think I like the other ones a little bit better. But I like this knife. I like this knife is very handy. Love my old cold steel law, man. And this hog, the quality of a hog is a step above all these knives I have. These hogs are like very high quality knives. Fit and finish, they come with polished edges. I mean, and polished blade tangs, so they're like, they're super smooth. That's the way they come to you. They come to you like you don't need any kind of adjustments or anything, they come to you perfectly. And I wish a lot of the other manufacturers would make knives like that. And this Ritter Hogue is super awesome. Out of all the Hogues I got, I like this one the best, the Ritter Hogue. And you guys know I got the Exemplar and the Sig and the other two Hogues I got and the Deca and, this, and the Switchblade Hogue. Out of all of them, I like this one the best. This is my favorite out of all my Hogues, the Ritter Hogue. I think it comes from Knifeworks, if I remember right. I think I bought it at Knifeworks. It's a Knifeworks exclusive. So I don't know if you can get them anywhere else. But the Ritter Hug is awesome. It's the one I would recommend the most out of all the hugs. Absolutely love it. But for playing, this one the one that I like to play the most. Absolutely love this one. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter if you're using the, the thumb studs or if you're just using the the lock bar. It doesn't matter what you're using. It's just like super playful. Or the or the flipper. Super playful. If you like the fidget, this is the ultimate fidgeter that I found this year. And I've tried I tried a lot of different brands for fidgeting knives. Even though I got even got into the Chinese brands and stuff like that. This one is the most fidgeting, fidgetable. I don't know if I'm saying that right or whatever, even if it's a word. <laughs> but it's the most fun to want, it's, the, it's the most fun to fidget with, put it that way. Absolutely love it. The Vision XR. And it's a great work knife too because of the size of it. It's three and a half inch blade. CTS XHP. It's not a cheap knife though. These are like about $130 to $50. I've got, I got this one on sale at Knife Center for 119 when they had them on sale a while back. But I think normally they're like 149 or something like that. That's an excellent knife. Excellent knife. And the edge, it holds, you know, I've never had to resharpen it. And I've used it a lot. It's getting a little bit, getting a little bit of wearing right here. Because when the blade gets loose, I think it rubs against the, the handle scale. And you just have to tighten it back up again. But this is an awesome knife. Awesome, awesome. Absolutely love all these. Absolutely love all these. All right, people. Well, I'm starting to ramble now. It's time to call it off. I put uh, uh, I put this one up tonight so you guys can see it. And I'm gonna leave a link in there to the to the um, slicey dicey interview with Andrew Demko. And I suggest that everybody watch it, watch the full interview because you will learn a lot about cold steel knives and you will learn a lot about steel, about the best places to buy, you know, get knives that, you know, where you, where you want your steel to be coming from there and the knives that you own. He really talks about how great Japanese steel is and how meticulous the Japanese are about steel and same thing with the U.S. steel. It's like the two best places to get steel from the United States and from Japan. And then and, uh, and he talks about that. I'm not gonna you, you know, I'm not gonna tell you everything, but you just need to watch it. And he'll tell you like about the worst places to get steel from and the reasons why. And uh, but anyway, that's it for today. Peace out. Happy holidays. Ho ho ho.